Okay, good afternoon. Hi all, thank you for joining us today. My name is John Kennerson. I am joined by Patrice Malakian and Akash Maholtra. We're bringing together the Exchange Office and Windows Engineering team here to talk with you about the importance of software updates. Keeping devices updated with servicing and security updates is important, and we've been making engineering investments designed to help administrators better understand their environment. One such investment is the Software Updates Dashboard in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. So we're gonna be talking with you today about a little bit more than just the Exchange Dashboard. We'll start with a quick review of the overall Microsoft 365 Software Updates work, take a look at the Office and Windows tabs, then shift to Exchange before wrapping up with q and I'll now turn it over to Akash. Hey everyone, welcome, thanks for joining. I'll start off today by talking about this software update page we have at the Microsoft Admin Center. We all know that keeping devices current with the latest security updates is an important part of keeping your organization secure. Of course, there are other benefits to keeping software up to date, such as getting the latest bug fixes and new features. But for most of the customers we talk to, security is the main reason to keep software and the devices and servers up to date. To help in this effort, back in June, we added a new software updates page to the health section of the Microsoft Admin Center. And just for context, the Microsoft 365 Health Dashboard was initially created to help you understand how well apps and services are running in your organization. We wanted to expand on this and add more update health related information. And so the goal of the software update page is to effectively communicate the urgency of missing security updates in an easy to consume format. This is especially useful for those who want a quick at a glance view of their compliance. And so with the page I'm going to show you will provide a high level summary of whether you have devices that are behind on receiving the latest updates released by Microsoft uh, more on the current updates. I'll be walking through the Office and Windows experience and later John will be showcasing the Exchange experience. In the Microsoft 365 Apps tab, you can see the update status for your Office desktop <coughs> software installed on devices. At a quick glance at the graph, we'll show you how many devices are up to date on the latest build, how many are falling behind, and we know it can take a little while to get the updates deployed to your environment. So we want to differentiate between being a single security update behind or being multiple security updates behind. If you see a lot of orange here, it means you have devices that are on a multiple builds behind, and it's probably worth taking a closer look at. And for devices that are behind on security updates, this page will also show you how many security vulnerabilities so devices may be exposed to by not having the most current security updates. Um, clicking more details, you'll be able to see the specific office builds and known existing vulnerabilities. It'll open up a new flyout. Now onto the windows. We have a similar experience here in the windows tab. Again, we want to emphasize how important it is with today's persuasive security threats to be on the latest Windows cumulative updates to help protect your organization from vulnerabilities. So here in the Windows tab, you can see whether your devices are on the latest security update or have fallen a bit behind or are running on an unsupported operating system. Again, the more orange or red your visuals are, the more you know that attention is needed. If you want to dive deeper into the status of your updates, you can actually go to our Windows reporting solution by clicking the go to update compliance button on top and doing so it'll take you toward the Azure portal where you'll be able to access the reports, view device information and act on those devices that are not able to fully update. You'll be able to view reporting on your security updates, feature updates and soon your driver updates within the same user experience. And no, this is all assuming that you know you've configured your reporting solution and you met the prereqs all of which I'm not talking about here today, but we have docs on that for update compliance. And so both the Office and Windows tabs in the software updates page are currently in public preview, so we want to hear from you. So please go to the health section of the admin center, try them out, provide feedback, and let us know how we can improve this experience. Um, I'll hand it over to John right now, who's going to be talking about the addition of the exchange experience on the same page. Great. Thanks, Akash. It's great to see the Office and Windows tabs in public preview. 
Exchange Server, as Akash said, is now building on that software, found, software updates foundation. In his keynote, Harry mentioned the importance of staying updated several times this morning. We're making these investments in time and resources because we deeply and genuinely think that staying updated matters. You've heard the phrase staying updated now numerous times. We'll first explore what staying updated means and then walk through the dashboard itself. Keeping an Exchange server environment up to date in this context means staying supported. Let's talk through this matrix. On the left hand side are the server versions and their product support lifecycle phase. In the center are cumulative updates labeled with which are supported for security updates. And on the right are the security updates themselves. Security updates are provided when necessary. This means they could be released every month or there, there could be no security update for several months. The most recent one for Exchange Server was in August. Now, looking at the top row, Exchange Server 2019 is in mainstream support. We released a security update in August for the current cumulative update, which is CU12, and for one prior, so N minus one, CU11. While in mainstream support, future cumulative updates will be released twice per year, approximately six months apart. These updates are driven by content and quality, not date, so the release timing may not be exact there. As those future updates are released, we will continue to support the current and one prior cumulative update for security updates as necessary. The support for current and prior cumulative updates combined with our updated release cadence means that servers deployed on CU11 when it released last year will have been able to keep current with security updates for nearly a year before having to update to the future CU13 when that eventually comes out. So this combination of our support for two cumulative updates and the shift in the release cadence allows you to get more time out of that investment in deploying a CU um, and as far as it being uh, supported for security updates. Okay. Now in the middle row, you see that Exchange Server 2016 is in extended support. When products reach extended support, we typically provide security updates only for the current CU, which is CU23. Since, it's, since Exchange 2016 recently shifted to extended, security updates for CU22 will be supported for a limited period of time. Because of this, the August security update was released for both CU22 and CU23. After that limited period of time expires, security updates will only be provided for CU23 ongoing. This is why Exchange 2016 CU22 is striped here and listed as unsupported going forward. If you have Exchange 2016 servers that are on CU22 today, they should be updated to CU23 in order to receive further security updates. And now the bottom row is Exchange 2013. It also is on extended support and has been for a while. The August security update was only provided for CU23 on Exchange uh, 2013. As noted on the far right of the row, Exchange 2013 will reach end of support on April 11th, 2000, uh, 2023, marking the end of its security update coverage. So in summary, staying up to date for Exchange 2019 requires keeping up with cumulative updates, 
so that servers are on the current or one prior staying up to date for Exchange 2016 and 2013 require being on the latest cumulative update, which happens to be CU23 for both, oddly enough. And for all three versions, on top of that cumulative update, deploying the necessary security updates when they are released. So, but, you had to know there was a but. But, occasionally, there are updates that might require manual actions in addition to just installing the updates themselves. When these happen, they're well documented in the installation notes and in blog posts, so be sure to read those carefully. So an example of this just happened with the August security update. Enabling extended protection takes manual steps after installing the August security update. Now, there is a downloadable tool that can help here. It's called the Health Checker. It's run by you on premises, and it's able to reflect the status of updates and related manual actions for you. Now, now that we understand what it means to be updated, why, why do we feel it's so important to keep servers updated? As mentioned a few slides ago, we, rele we release security updates as they're needed. As soon as we release an update, there are people who will begin investigating how to take advantage of an unpatched device. Weeks or months after a security update is released, exploits may appear and impact any unpatched servers. An unpatched vulnerability that itself was not rated critical could also later become part of a more serious attack chain. So it does matter that you be up to date. Being up to date on cumulative updates means that you are able to quickly apply security updates when they are released. And being up to date on security updates means that you are better protected. Zero day events have happened and being up to date on servicing enables fast action when every minute counts. Now, with that background, let's see how the new Exchange dashboard will help. Much, if not all, of the material we just talked through has been covered in Exchange team blog posts. We set out to connect that guidance with an easy to deploy mechanism to help you understand what's in your environment and whether it's up to date. The Exchange dashboard has just started private preview. It doesn't automate the download or installation of updates. It's a tool to help you be better informed and to point you to additional useful resources. It's also intended to be independent of on-premises server version or update. The insights it will, it will provide are curated from multiple data sources including Microsoft Online Services and public data sets such as DNS records. The resulting list of servers is derived from recent email interactions with Exchange Online that can be associated with a customer's tenant ID. While this approach absolutely has some advantages, it also has some limitations. For example, being mail flow driven means no dependence on Exchange server version or update, but it also means no information about servers that are not involved in mail that transits Exchange Online. We're leveraging our preview cycle now to help identify the best approach for handling any of the limitations that we're running into. As a result, there may be servers in your environment that are not reflected in this initial generation of the dashboard. That said, this initial dashboard is more than just a list of servers. There are contextual links to update related resources that we think will prove valuable as well. So with that, let's begin the tour. 
Overall, as you see, the Exchange tab maintains a similar look and feel to what you saw with the Office and Windows examples. We have two main areas of information. The upper section focuses on servers that are currently supported, and the lower section focuses on servers that are out of support or soon will be. I'll step through key parts of each, beginning with supported servers. For supported servers, information about the cumulative updates is on the left and security updates is on the right. Note that the counts here and throughout the various tabs and pages are the most current data, not a historical point in time or trend. So let's see what's being reported here. The headings indicate how many servers need updates. So here, one server needs a cumulative update and three servers need security updates. On the line just below the heading is the release date for the most current update. The latest cumulative update was released on April 20th, and the latest security update was released on August 9th. Under the release date are bar charts of server update status, one for cumulative updates on the left, one for security updates on the right. The number on the far right of each chart is the total number of servers associated with this tenant, and there are 15 in this example. Additional status detail pops up when hovering over the chart segment. So let's take a look at a few examples of that. Here is the blue updated segment of the cumulative update chart. The first thing to point out here is the date, uh, data freshness date. This is when the server data was last updated. These updates run daily, but lag by about 24 hours. Below the freshness date is the count of servers by version that were identified as being up to date on cumulative updates. Just as you saw with Windows and Office, hovering over the orange section pops out the details about any server that's running on an out of date cumulative update. In this example, there is one. And again, as with cumulative updates, Hovering over the security update chart segment pops out details of what comprises that portion of the chart. Here we see there's eight 2019 and four 2016 servers that are up to date on security updates. And then hovering over the orange segment pops out the out of date detail for security updates as well. That's all interesting, but what more can we learn here? What servers are these? If they're out of date, how, how can this help you find the server and update it? We can dive deeper into the charts to find further detail, including server names. On each of the charts, there's a view servers button. Each of the buttons will bring up the details for either cumulative updates or security updates. We'll take a look at what first, what can be seen for cumulative updates. The plane that slides in from the right has tabs for each supported Exchange Server version. This is 2019, and you see under latest update, uh, on, under the la latest update heading, that the most recent cumulative update is cumulative update 12. There are nine 2019 servers, and all of them are up to date. In the table below that, there's three columns. The leftmost part of the server name is the first column. Uh, in the middle is its cumulative update, and on the right is update status. And there's one more thing to call out here. That is the export to CSV link. Clicking on this generates a CSV download of server information. This includes all detected servers, including their cumulative update and security update details, not just the information for the tab you happen to be on here. I mentioned earlier that the dashboard displays the most current data that we have. You could create your own trend reports by periodically downloading the CSV and saving them for later use in Excel or Power BI. Now let's move on and see what information is provided for Exchange 2016. 
Clicking on the 2016 tab brings up that. Here you see that CO23 is the most current cumulative update and that one server is identified as being out of date. As noted in the last row of the table, it's running CU21 and needs to be updated. Remember that after you install a new cumulative update, it's important to check for and install any necessary security updates too. The view all updates link, which is at the top, can help you identify and download all of the necessary updates. It takes you directly to the appropriate portion of the Exchange Server Builds documentation. Here, you can scroll through and select the necessary updates. Note that indeed, there are security updates for CU23 that will need to be applied. Security updates are cumulative though. So in this case, even though there's two security updates available, only the August security update would need to be installed after updating to CU23. So we just covered the View Servers button from the cumulative updates perspective. Staying current on cumulative updates is a big step indeed. It means that you can leverage the ongoing innovation being released by engineering in cumulative updates and it means being eligible for security updates. So now let's take a look, quick look at what the dashboard can provide about security update status. Clicking on the view servers link from the security update side, again, brings in the pane from the right. Here we're on the Exchange 2019 tab and see that the latest security update is August 2022. As seen in the heading of the table, one server is out of date and it's on the May SU. As with the cumulative updates pane, you can follow the link to the download page and identify the necessary updates to install. And again, the security update is cumulative, so you only need to install the most recent one. Now, we could click on 2016 and 2013 tabs here to see more details about the other two servers that need a security update. But instead, let's shift back to the main dashboard and take a look at the bottom half of that uh, and talk about servers that are out of support. Being aware of when a server is out of support is important as those servers are no longer eligible for security updates. In this example, there are two servers out of support, one on Exchange 2007 and one Exchange 2010. We don't provide additional detail here, but the server names and their build information are included in the previously mentioned CSV download of all of the other servers. It's interesting to note that we do call out Exchange 2013 here because while it is not out of support yet, it is out of support soon. It is out of support on, as I mentioned, April 11th. And we really want to call attention to the fact that that server and the other two need uh, action. What action needs to be taken? Well, the learn more about link at the bottom will help. That link slides in a curated list of key documentation, articles, and blog posts. These resources will help you upgrade to a supported version of Exchange Server or to migrate to Exchange Online. There are documents specific to Exchange 2007 and 2010, Soon we'll be including details on removing Exchange 2013 from an environment, and we'll also add others as well that are applicable over time. Helping you better understand your environment and keep it updated are the overall purpose of these investments that we've been making. The last thing to call out is this link at the top of the main page. The learn more link at the top slides in a pane that features two topics we've already covered here 
an explanation of the data and approach that we're taking to derive this, and a link to the Exchange Team blog post that addresses why it's important to keep servers updated. With that, let's review a few key points we'd like you to leave here with. First and foremost, it's important to be fully up to date. Up to date on cumulative updates, security updates, and any necessary manual actions. We're making engineering investments to help you be better informed of device update status and of, and of steps to be taken in order to be updated. These investments range from the new software updates work here that we've walked through, to improvements in product update processes, to tools like the Health Checker and Update Wizard. Keep an eye out for more information in the Exchange Server Team blog around developments in, uh, in Exchange, and keep an eye on the Microsoft 365 roadmap for timing updates on things uh, like the GA of uh, Office and Windows and of expansion of the previews for the Exchange page. Please share your thoughts and feedback on software updates with us on the ECI hyphen engineering at microsoft.com alias. And I encourage you to join the exchange and hybrid session tomorrow for some insights on some future investment areas, as well as the engineering team roundtable and ask the expert sessions as well. I think the, there will be some very clear tie-ins to what we've discussed here today um, in those sessions. Thank you, and um, we have some time now to be able to, to answer some questions if there are any um, that folks would like to share. Please use the chat. Or if you'd like to ask in person, raise your hand and or just come off mute. John, there was one question which I think was interesting and uh, I didn't know how to answer, but uh, what kind of permissions does the admin need in order to be able to see Exchange servers uh, on that page when it becomes available to everybody? Like, is this is this going to be available to Exchange admins or how do how will permissions work for the for the page in the Microsoft 365 portal? Um, it is Exchange admin global read and Patrice, sorry, remind me, is it, it's uh, overall enterprise admin as well, correct? I mean, what's the question? Um, which rights can see the Exchange server tab? Oh. That ended up being global, global read, Exchange admin, and uh, tenant admin, right? I think so. Yeah, I can. I I believe it is those three. Um, I can follow up. Um, and and actually, unless one of our devs is here, but uh, I'll follow up and confirm that. I'm I'm pretty sure that that's the three that we uh, ended up uh, keying in on. Chris has his hand up for a question. Uh, yeah, thanks, Paul. Yes, Chris. Thanks, John. Um, actually, I have two questions. Uh, the first one is the data that's collected about the Exchange servers, uh, is it applying just to mailbox servers or does it also uh, collect information about edge transport servers? That is a great question. Um, it is servers that show up in the SMTP headers uh, as mail is delivered through. 
And one of the things that we are leveraging the private preview for is refining our understanding of exactly what topologies yield what result in terms of which servers actually do show up in the, uh, in the headers for us to be able to key in on. Um, we are seeing some instances where we are able to identify the edge server, uh, but there are also have been some instances where because of some topology uniqueness, we have not seen the edge server. So we're still refining our understanding of the mechanics there to then be able to explain it uh, to customers so that it's a uh, uh, it's a uh, you know expectations are set correctly for what we'll be able to 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 see and report on. Great, thank you. And my second question is: Is the data that's collected is it accessible at all by a PowerShell or Graph API, or is it just to the UI? Uh, no, it's just to the UI and the and the CSV download. Yeah, great, thank you. Yes, George. In, oh. ju ju just a follow up question on the uh, with regards to the edge transport. So if yeah. the edge, so if the edge transports are used as the SMTP, um, I guess brokerage, everything goes through the edge transports before it hits exchange online. Does that mean only the edge transports uh, would show up in this dashboard and none of the other um, servers uh, that would sit behind it? That I believe we would still see the mailbox servers as well, um, but again, is that is a topology that we want to confirm with the uh, private preview that we have a clear understanding of what what exactly we will see. Gotcha. Thanks for the, thanks for the information. Mm -hmm. uh, Stu. Oh, Hi, John. Me, Stuart. Hi, John. Good evening from the UK. Um, I was just interested to know, I was looking at our own tenant. Obviously, we don't have it yet. Will we be able to add the exchange data to the same log analytics workplace, or do we need to set up a separate one when we actually get to see it? Patrice, do you know the answer to that? I, I do not know what the workplace is, so I I will need to follow up on that unless Patrice happens to know. I don't know, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, okay. Stuart, I will have to follow up on that. No worries, thank you. If you put your um, email in the chat, I'll uh, and along with the question, I'll be sure to follow up. Okay, thanks. Well, while, while you're thinking of questions, I'll, I'll ask you all one. Um, does software updates as a concept look like something that will be useful to you? Um, and kind of parochially thinking about the exchange world, um, I mentioned some of the limitations and we talked through, through, through the questions, uh, some of the limitations. Do you think that even with the, that type of limitation around you know, that the data we provide may not be entirely complete. Does it still sound interesting and that you think it could be useful? Or what are what are some things uh, that you think would be absolutely essential for us to make sure that we include it? So uh, if you had any thoughts around that, that would be great. And then for my uh, Office and, and Windows peers, um, you know, have, have you seen their software updates tab yet since it is in public preview and uh, perhaps you had some early feedback for them around that from your personal experience.
Okay. If no other questions, Patrice or Akash, any closing comments or uh, yeah, also reaching out to Nino, Paul or Scott, if there's anything further you'd like to share here. I think for me, please use the experiences and let us know any feedback you have through the either the email link you have here or through the feedback experience in uh, Microsoft 365 admin center. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Patrice, for mentioning the feedback experience in the admin center. Um, that can also be a, a you know a a prime way of getting us feedback in addition to the uh, to the email alias. So thank you very much for that. Hey John, so will we get a note um, when we can expect it to appear actually in our tenant in the message center? Yes, absolutely. Um, so how we envision this uh, unfolding here is we just, you know, literally last week started the private preview um, with a, a, a group of customers. We will potentially be adding to that private preview over the coming you know, weeks to, to month or two. Um, watch for posts in the uh, exchange team blog for uh, solicitation for uh, volunteers who may want to participate. We'll try to include some characteristics for the types of customers we're looking for. Um, so we'll be potentially expanding the preview a little bit. Uh, so we envision being in preview for a month to two. Uh, we'd really like to get it to public preview before the end of this year. Uh, whether we're able to accomplish that or not will depend on you know, what, what we learn here over the next, uh, you know, the next few weeks or so. Um, but absolutely, um, if you're not part of the preview, when we do go to public preview, we will post to Message Center um, to make folks aware of that as well. But you know, a couple of different ways to stay plugged into our progress. Uh, Message Center for you know eventually, uh, the uh, Microsoft 365 roadmap, and of course, the Exchange Server Team blog. Uh, the blog as well will put information um, earlier about things like expansion of the preview and that type of thing. Thank you. I did have one more question. Um, and I may have missed this because I got called away for a second. Will we be able to script anything so that we can get these uh, types of reports sent to our non-admin email accounts so that we don't have to go up to the admin center to, to keep logging in and looking at them? That is a great feature request. We don't have that today, um, but I will enter an item for us to to put that on the backlog but, but that's a great idea the funny thing is i keep looking I'm, I'm i'm right now taking a new devops course that the first thing that they mentioned in like like the first half hour of the course was developing any tool that has to be used as a gui is the worst practice you can ever have yet it's something that continuously happens Thanks. Oh, and a quick follow up on the uh, on the roles question. So Patrice has followed up with our uh, dev manager and uh, the roles for the exchange tab are global admin, global reader and exchange admin.
looking to make sure we didn't miss anything else. I don't think so. Um, so I'm happy to sit here. Um, but you know, if uh, you know if anyone has more questions, please feel free to 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 speak up and and ask or or type. Um, thank you so much for coming and spending your time with us uh, to walk through this, uh, you know, in in our minds, you know, really important topic of helping you be able to keep your servers more up to date and to simplify what that process takes. Uh, absolutely, we recognize that, you know, it is it is not simple for you to keep environments updated and Part of the, you know, as I mentioned, part of the whole purpose for the tools here and the investments we've been making is that we we want to make that easier for you and we want to make it more transparent for you on where your servers stand and how best to keep them updated. So again, thank you very much for your time and uh, have a great rest of your day and uh, rest of Mech. I hope you all have enjoyed the session so far and that you have a rich day tomorrow as well. Thanks all.